It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Italy's Foreign Minister Paolo Gentiloni is expected to become Prime Minister of Italy. The move comes in the wake of Prime Minister Matteo Renzi resigning last week when he lost a referendum to reform the country's constitution. The referendum was defeated by 59.1 percent and its defeat is generally considered to represent a boost to the country's Eurosceptics. They resist EU policies and seek greater independence from EU, and analysts believe that the new Prime Minister, Paolo Gentiloni, will strengthen the position of both the left and the right-wing Eurosceptic parties in Italy, since he comes from the same center-left pro-EU party as the departing Matteo Renzi, whose policies were rejected in the referendum. Now, joining me to talk about all of this is Loretta Napoliani, author of Merchant of Men, How Jihadis and ISIS Turned Kidnapping and Refugee Trafficking into a Multi-Million or Billion Dollar Business. Loretta, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. So, Loretta, um, sitting on this side of the pond, um, we are not exactly completely aware of the referendum and what it was calling for that failed and uh, forced uh, Matt Renzi to resign. Tell us more about what was in the referendum and why it was so misunderstood, I guess, here and in Italy. The referendum was to reduce the number of senators uh, to 100. Basically, the idea was to change the Constitution so that the upper house uh, would not block any more uh, key decisions which are made by you know, the lower house. That also would give uh, much more power to the party who is in power, um, the party of the prime minister. Mm, the, the referendum was presented as a way forward to ease a situation which has been typical of Italy for a very long time which is very difficult to come out to with a new legislation because there are too many parties, there are too many currents inside the parties, so it's always very difficult to reach an agreement. So the idea was, you know, we reduce uh, the power of the upper house and with the power of the lower house, uh, we will be able to pass legislation much more quickly. So that's more or less what it was. Why did Matteo Renzi, now to be former prime minister since he resigned, um, why did he hedge so much of his political power on this referendum by offering to resign if it was not passed? Well, he did a bit the same thing that Cameron did. Um, because Matteo Renzi has not been elected, um, the idea was, I will present this referendum as a sort of referendum on myself. I'm so popular, and that was where he made a mistake. He thought that being so popular was going to give weight to the referendum, so people would vote, even if they did not agree with the referendum, even if they did not understand the referendum, because that's the key issue. Most people did not understand what they were voting for. They would vote yes, because Matteo Renzi had told them to vote yes. Clearly, he was wrong, and he did say that. Actually, in the speech he gave at 12 o'clock, on the day of the referendum, when finally we knew he had lost it, he said, I did not know that I was so unpopular. So it was a miscalculation. Now, uh, it is clear that people on the left as well as people on the right oppose this referendum, mm -hmm. obviously for very different reasons. Tell us why. Well, it, the, the real opposition, uh, the key, I would say, opposition came from his own party. So inside his own party, uh, a group of uh, people who have been very important. Uh, these are the um, old timers, we can call them, uh, uh, former members of the Communist Party who had formed this party initially. Had been very quiet uh, uh, in the transition from the previous secretary of the party to Matteo Renzi. So people thought that perhaps these old timers were actually backing Renzi. Uh, which I think it was true up to a certain point, uh, up to the reform. Because you see, this is a reform which will change completely 
the, the political structure of Italy. It would be okay if a party like you know, the party of Matteo Renzi is in power, which is the party of the establishment. But what would happen if the party in power is the populist uh, Movimento Cinque Stelle? That party will have uh, total power. Nobody could block it, so the upper house could not block it. And this is why his own party thought this is not a good move at all. And so tell us about the current foreign minister who's going mm -hmm. to be um, uh, sworn in as the Prime Minister, what the process is and tell us a little bit about him. Okay, so the process uh, is, is actually quite simple. The Prime Minister resigns uh, and then he presents his resignation to the President of the Republic. The President of the Republic decides if he accepts it or not the resignation. Now in the case of Renzi, the initial um, decision was not to accept the his resignation. So everybody thought that there was going to be another Renzi government with a reshuffling of the minister. But because of the opposition inside his own party of the old timers, Renzi could not be um, the, in the new prime minister again. So they negotiate among each other and they decided to present Gentiloni. So Gentiloni is the a former um, foreign minister of Renzi is, um, he comes from a very important political family. His great grandfather uh, was in politics at the beginning of the last century and he carried on important reforms. Uh, he has been in politics uh, um, since he was quite young. He was uh, not uh, really a key figure until very, very recently. Um, he was very close to um, the Christian Democrats, so he's not coming from the left. I would say he's coming from the center left, as Renzi was coming from you know, the center left, not from the left. He's a good transition individual because he's not very popular, he's not very known. Lots of people don't even know who he is because the foreign minister is not such a big figure in a country like Italy. He's also, I think, the kind of individual that being not so linked to the party, not so much identified with the party if he fails, uh, and of course he will fail because this is not an elected government. Uh, um, when it's it, not going to matter. When are the next elections? So the election should be in 2018. Uh, but the opposition, of course, wants to go to the election as soon as possible. And we know, we know that the um, party of Renzi and Gentiloni will take less votes. So the prime minister uh, will for sure lose. And this is, again, is a good idea to have uh, an individual that is not so key to the party, um, but he can do the job. All right, Lord, I thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.